got the people in, in Twitch, my, my group here, where we're doing some uh, Kubernetes co-learning, uh, cloud native stuff. And there's been an ongoing debate since I've been starting to learn this like some four or five months ago about Podman versus Docker. And we're talking about the commands, right? Um, and I have to give you a little background on, on why this has been a fight and what's going on. I'm not going to go too deep. I'm going to try to keep it shallow, keep it under 10 minutes. It's 12, it's 12.58 there, so we'll look at that. So the, first of all, um, you know, you, you, can, you can get Docker. We're talking just Docker, Docker, without anything else. Uh, any number of ways right now. I mean, the traditional way is to download Docker desktop for Mac or Windows or for Linux to do your Docker install with a script or a package or whatever. And that, then you end up with Docker, right? And you can use Docker without any inference or use of Kubernetes at all. And, and you're good to go. And it's a pretty easy process to do an installation, even though I found out, you know, two weeks ago, a week ago, that Docker desktop is proprietary software. And it's pretty, you know, it's pretty flexible proprietary software you don't have to pay unless you're an enterprise user which i am and so there's a lot of reasons you know to to to, to consider that and so i have to give you this little backstory in order to understand why my position on podman has changed uh I, when podman first came out uh i was kind of angry because podman claims that it's you know it's safer than docker and that it, it, you know, it's daemon less. In other words, it's not actually. It uses systemd instead of, you know, containerd. And Docker is independent, it uses containerd. It doesn't have any integration with systemd, even though there's problems there because by using systemd, they can do things in some sense that are more controlled and everything. And then from what I understand, containerd, you know, which is Docker, is now starting to do things that Podman has done. And, you know, the people say, hey, you can run, you know, rootless Docker, but you have to do this and this, and it has to run, it has to get started up ultimately by systemd anyway. So there's, there's this big technical battle, and everything I just said is probably going to make your eyes glaze over for a while unless you're a cloud native person. But it bothered me that first of all, Podman's Red Hat, and I have kind of a bad taste in my mouth sometimes from Red Hat. Although that's changing lately, I keep finding out really amazing things that Red Hat is doing on the on the Kubernetes front and the cloud native front, despite their you know very definitive position on making cash. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's, it's, but let me continue. So we've got. So I'm trying to decide how to get Docker the fastest. I was mostly in Docker worlds while I was trying to get ready. Wrote my own first Docker files up. And, and I was, at the whole time, I'm trying to consider how do I help a beginner here? How do I help a beginner get going? And up to, up to you know, two weeks ago, my, my recommendation above every other, and there's many ways, many paths to it, but my number one recommendation would be download Docker Desktop, get a Linux machine running in there, start learning Linux. Boom, right? That's no longer my recommendation. My recommendation now is install VirtualBox, install Minikube, and then do Minikube SSH and you get right onto the node right away that's running all of these amazing things. And in fact, I'm running it over here. Um, SSH, so uh, MQ, MK, SSH will get you onto the node. You're onto a Minikube node that it has a Docker user. Uh, and you can do all kinds of things over there, right? It actually has Docker already installed. And this is going to bring me to the next point. The other thing, too, I noticed about this is the default Minikube uh, uh, runs. Yeah, this can be set, but it, it, it's using Podman. So there's some Podman stuff over here. You can use it if you want. It, when you use Minikube, I won't get into it, but when you use Minikube, you can define what container runtime to use. You can define what driver to use, and which includes you know, putting stuff inside uh, of Docker if you already have a Docker installation already. But that defeats the purpose because one of the advantages of Minikube is that you can install it and on anything, literally anything, and, and it will take care of all the, all the container runtime installation for you. And it gives you any number of, of possibilities. You can specify that you want a, a Docker container D, Creo, whatever. And th these things are not, I mean, kind does sort of that, does that, but, it, but this is like really good. But, but one of the pieces, let's, let's bring it back home to the whole idea between Minikube versus Docker, okay? So if, if one of the advantages of using, of, of using uh, one of my distastes about Podman was that it only runs on Linux. Okay, so so let's start that. So uh, a Podman uh, only runs on Linux. Now this might not be immediately obvious to an advanced user, cloud native person, but that's a pain in the butt to a beginner, because you can't say. Uh, first of all, Podman is Kubernetes specific, right? So people were telling me early on they were like, well, you know, you, may, you probably don't want to install Docker. You probably want Podman. Well. And, and, and they were selling me on Podman because Podman is 100% compatible with Docker, plus it's also Kubernetes aware, blah, 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 right? And 
And so they were selling Podman to me as if, a, hey, you've just saved yourself all that problem getting ready for Kubernetes, and, which ultimately is where you want to go. You don't want to just be container, you know, Docker person. You want to be, you, you really do want to move on to putting a cluster someplace you can test and everything. And, and Podman makes a big deal about being 100% compatible, including they had a Docker Compose recently, which I would never use, but they added that. Um, but that entire point about, that used to be a bad point. So, used to be downside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, from 2013, yes. So, so Podman, so to me, that used to be a downside. Why? Because, you know, people, um, beginners had to have Linux. Beginners, uh, beginners had to install Linux before using Podman. And up to, you know, very recently, that was a big deal. Installing Linux is hard. You know, whether you want to put it on hardware, you want to run a virtual machine, you, know, you want to run it over WSL, you want to do up to, as I said, up to recently, uh, I was having people use Docker Desktop to get a terminal, right? But it's much better. So the, the main change here is that VirtualBox, VirtualBox is Linux. And, and I'm, that's, a, that's really succinctly saying it. Um, so, so with VirtualBox as Linux, that means that you install VirtualBox for a million reasons that you need besides the fact that you can run Minikube in it, right? And when you install VirtualBox, you already got Linux, right? So, so, uh, uh, so I'm going to put it this way. So, uh, Mini, Minikube, I'm going to put Minikube is superior uh, to, uh, to Docker Desktop. And in my opinion, this is my video. I'm going to tell you what I think. So I think Minikube is superior to Docker Desktop for beginners. Uh, and you're like, well, they're not the same thing. They're not. But they get you the same things in terms of learning. So VirtualBox is Linux uh, and, uh, and, and one of uh, required drivers for Minikube, all right? And one of drivers for Minikube. So you have to pick a, a, a driver for Minikube. I'm gonna, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tie this all together, I promise. Okay, so VirtualBox is Linux. So you can't have Minikube unless you have a driver. Okay, so let's put that down. Minikube uh, requires, requires a driver. And I'm not gonna get into it, but, but one of those uh, VirtualBox uh, VirtualBox is one of is is one of the drivers for Minikube. I think it happens to be the best one, uh, best uh, in my whole opinion, uh, for reasons that I'll get into in another video. Uh, so, what this means is that uh, uh, VirtualBox, uh, VirtualBox. Uh, okay, so let's see. Minikube. How may I put this? Minikube plus VirtualBox uh, equals fully functional Linux. Okay? And, and we're talking about this, MKSSH. That's it. And you get it on the node automatically. All right. Now we can make the conclusion. Because guess what comes on it? Guess what comes on it? Podman. So... When you're running Docker, I don't even think you're using actual Docker. I really want to find out, right? But at that point, I, it appears to me that Podman is already there, right? And Podman, so um, uh, Podman uh, is already uh, aware of C groups v2. And if you don't know what that is, you know, it's, it's basically, it's more clued in. Podman is being more clued in. It's, it's just, it's more current. Okay. So we're going to put Podman uh, seems to be keeping itself uh, more current, more relevant. And that means, you know, it's going to drop the dependency on the socket and a bunch of things. So, so the main, okay. So, uh, I'm going to put this, uh, the above point, the, uh, I'm going to say this, uh, 
removes the primary uh, disadvantage, disadvantage of Podman for beginners. Why? Because the number one blocker for a beginner is getting Linux. But if you install VirtualBox and, and Minikube, you bypass that all the way. So whether you're using the Docker command or using the Podman command, you don't care because you have Linux now. And on top of that, uh, it seems to be that it comes with it. So uh, Minikube uh, installs Podman. Uh, I'm pretty sure. So in fact, we're going to find out. Maybe not. Yep, there it is. All right. So if Minikube installs Podman, uh, I'm going to say with uh, Docker uh, support. So it supports uh, uh, name support. So you can use the Docker word if you're just typing D or whatever. So because Minikube comes with Podman, in fact, this would be interesting. Let's see which Docker is bin Docker, right? LS dash. I wonder if it's a link. I, don't, I bet it's not. That would be really interesting to, say, to figure out which Docker. Uh, okay, and then let's do let's do that same thing for for Podman and see if there's any similarity. We could probably do a file diff or something, but uh, uh, probably not the same file. I doubt it. Yeah, there are two different files. The point is, is that Minikube brings it to you already, right? So, if the rather shallow disagreement with using Podman is, I can't install Podman unless I have Linux installed. Well, Minikube plus VirtualBox gets around that right away. And and then you're not using Docker Desktop because it's proprietary software now and it, you don't want to support it because as cool as it might be, it's proprietary and you can use Minikube and it's not proprietary. It's actually a better environment. I think, I think. And you get Docker installed for free. Not only that, you get Podman installed for free. You get Creo Engine installed for free. You get, all, you get a virtual machine that is stacked with all of the possible variations for doing for doing this stuff. This is this is not just an argument for Podman, but it's an argument yet again for using Minikube as a beginner because you get a more direct, full experience. Uh, and ultimately, I think Minikube is going to be the first one to deploy uh, Secret Secret B2. And because they're doing it in a virtual machine, they can actually use that part of the kernel, uh, things that, you know, kind can't do. And, and because it's, you know, it's, there's no sense of a device in, in kind. It's, it's just it's all running inside of a container container engine. So this has been a rather deep dive and kind of a complicated um, uh, statement on my part about this, but but I had to capture it because my aversion for Podman has completely vanished. I, I don't I don't have I don't care. Why don't I care? Because whether Podman has been installed by my the powers that be and I'm on OpenShift or in terms of like training and preparing to take care of this stuff or or develop for this stuff or whether Docker has been installed, I don't care because why? Because the the method that I'm using to prepare is Minikube virtual box, which comes with all of that by default. And it takes all that hassle away from me and doesn't require any in this, any extra relation besides VirtualBox and Minikube. Boom. You don't have to do Docker Desktop, which I mistakenly thought early on. I thought I was also going to have to do Docker Desktop in order to even run Minikube. No. Because Minikube installs Docker, a Docker engine that you can even use from PowerShell or, or Z Shell or whatever you want to. Because it's 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 got Minikube is aware of all those things and it packages it all for you really nicely. At the expense of, you know, two CPUs of being locked up for a virtual machine, which is some people would consider too bloated, and that's why they like kind. A lot of advanced people don't even like giving that up because they're just doing pure applications development for Kubernetes and they just want to keep it lightweight and, and so they, they don't they don't like that. But Minikube does that now too. So Minikube now uses the same method to run inside of a container engine uh, that kind uses. So to me, there's just really no doubt. So it's not just about Podman. It's like, you know, Minikube for the win, really. I, 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 I'm solidly behind that conclusion now. Uh uh, yeah, it, it, I'm going to, uh, uh, it gives you everything. So I might be overstating it. I'm still a noob. There's probably a lot of people that have varying uh, degrees of opinion on this. Please, please leave your, your comments. Try to be polite. I'm asking you to, uh, to be respe respectful and polite as, as much as I fail at that. Um, please try to do that in the comments. But if you have 
if, if I'm, you know, full of it, let me know, <laughs> but just, just share it with me. I'm still relatively new to all this stuff. So hopefully this will help, help, help get you guys along your way. But so one of the side effects that I hadn't really become aware of, just to summarize, uh, of my move to MiniQ plus VirtualBox is I really don't care about PubMed or Docker anymore because I got Linux, right? No matter what I have Linux, I'm running on anything that runs Minikube, which includes, you know, Windows and Mac can run Podman or, or Docker or anything, it doesn't matter, or any, any Linux at all. All right, I'm going to read a couple of little comments right here if I have a little bit of time. Um, uh, yeah, there's a, a bunch of contrarian uh, stuff that doesn't really relate <laughs> from the normal sources, which I won't, which I won't name in this video. Um, yeah, WSL2 plus Docker. A lot of people want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people like WSL2 plus Docker, and that's fine. You can use that. I actually have Docker still installed because I use Docker for uh, Docker for other things in it outside of my virtual environment. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that the the concern for whether to use Podman or Docker has been minimized by the approach of using Minikube for virtual box, which hands down is the easiest thing for a beginner who has no skills in Linux at all. Uh, it's, it's two installs and boom, you're on the shell and you can start learning everything. It's going to be the basis of the boost from going forward. Uh, yep. Yeah. Most of, a lot of, a lot of advanced people like to do the other way and their justifications are always, uh, they're always, their justifications are always uninformed <laughs> with regard to a beginner because they don't think about beginners. They keep thinking about other reasons that are, that are not what you probably care about. You're probably a beginner trying to get started. Uh, so your takeaway from this is if somebody gives you crap in a, about the Docker versus Podman fighting, it doesn't matter. I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. It's all Linux. Just put it on Linux. Just put a Minikube on and put it in VirtualBox. You're good to go. You don't have to enter into that fight and get really up in arms about it other than the technology involved. Uh, so when I hear something like Podman is more aware of Secrets V2 and is ahead of the curve in implementing the new standards for a cloud native, normally that would trouble me because I was like, oh, I really don't like Podman because of reason, these other dumb reasons that are mostly related to being a beginner. And uh, they're no longer relevant because I'm going to have Linux every time. And so are you because you're going to do mini keyboard search box. Bye.